Welcome back to another Mac Zack Tech. Today we're going over a custom build for Jimmy Faye Jetmere Second. We're looking to replace some tokens with cats and dogs, swarming the field, and crushing our opponents. Uh, we have a few alternate win columns, by which I really just mean one in the deck, uh, which we could use to just immediately win on the spot. There's a couple other ways that it could happen, but only one of them is like a guaranteed win. You know what I mean? Uh, we also have a number of ways to make blockers pretty irrelevant. Uh, that way our swarm can just sort of waltz on in, punch people in the face. It'll be a good time for us, and a little less so for our opponents. Uh, with that being said, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and do me a favor. Tap that subscribe button, ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode, and maybe even earn yourself a little shout out in one of our future videos. Speaking of which, this episode is dedicated to Jared Montiel. Jared, you rock. As mentioned earlier, our commander for the deck is Ginny Faye, Jetmere Second. They're here to replace our normal tokens with cats and or dogs. Uh, which, you know, our opponents won't kill because it'd have to be monsters to kill off our furry little friends. For this deck tech, I'd like to focus on a few key areas. Ramp. Card draw. Token generators. Board wipe protection, alternate win cons, and key combo pieces. Starting with ramp, let's define what I mean by it, that way we're all on the same page. So when I refer to ramp, I'm talking about any card that grabs, let's say, land from our deck and puts it in the field, all of our mana rocks, all of our treasure token generators specifically. So anything that falls into one of those categories is going to be considered ramp. Some of them are... You know, a little more break-even, a little less ramp um, than I think a tighter definition would allow for, uh, but they're going to count here. We'll start off with our land fetching effects with five lands that will all grab me lands from my deck, and four of those are going to cheat them out onto the field directly. All of them are super budget friendly and could easily be swapped out for more powerful fetches and shocks, uh, but the deck functions pretty well as is, and I don't need this to be... A crazy expensive deck to build and play with. We have Evolving Wilds, Broker's Hideout, Cabaretti Courtyard, Riveteers Overlook, and Ash Barons. Uh, Ash Barons being the one that's going to grab us a land to hand, but you know, still definitely worth playing in any multicolored deck. Moving into our Mana Rocks, we're utilizing four of them, which again could be upgraded to be a little bit more powerful. But I'm not really trying to tip into CEDH with this one. And we are rocking Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Commander Sphere, and Selesnia's Locket. Uh, which actually doubles as a nice little bit of card draw should we need it later in the game. We aren't done yet though. We have a few cards in here that are going to generate us some treasure tokens. And we're running Stimulus Package, Prosperous Partnership, Horde Holler, Bootlegger Stash, Prize Fight. Tireless Provisioner, Storm Kiln Artist, Prosperous Innkeeper, Gallic Readers, and Dockside Extortionist, as well as Avacyn's Pilgrim as kind of our only mana dork, and Awakening Zone, which is going to create us the Maldrazi spawn at upkeep, which we could sack for mana. This leaves us with, I think, 21 potential sources of ramp, a lot of these ramp sources being in the form of treasures. And if we have more mana than we know what to do with, we can just turn those treasures into creatures using our commander. With our ramp out of the way, we definitely need a way to keep our hand full so we have things to spend all this mana on. Uh, so how are we doing that? Well, we're running Search the Premises, which is going to give us a clue each and every time we are attacked. With all that extra mana, we can crack these clues pretty easily, keep our hand nice and full. Out of Oblivion is a card that is going to let us draw a card for having created a token. Uh, we should be able to do this basically every turn. Rumor Gatherer is offering a lot more card selection than they are card draw, but they do give us, you know, at least one card draw per turn, assuming they've seen two creatures ETB. Last up is Benny Brax Zoologist. Uh, so they're going to let us draw a card again every time we create a token. Well, once a turn when we create a token. But it is an every turn mechanic. So if we have ways such as using our uh, bootlegger stash we mentioned from earlier to kind of generate tokens on opponent's turns by tapping lands to generate treasures and whatnot, we can easily see this draws four cards around, which is pretty strong. 
pretty, pretty strong. With only five sources of card draw in the deck that we've seen, with another piece coming along in the alternate win con section, you might think that we're a little too light, but we actually don't need to see a ton of cards in order to swarm out our opponents, which is what we're looking to do in this next section. We're going to be focusing on cards that create tokens and not things that alter the types of tokens that are being generated, though we'll definitely touch on those here in a minute. Uh, we do have a single land that produces tokens, so I'm sure I could find more if that's the direction I really wanted to go in, and uh, we're using Castle Ardenvale, which can produce a single 1-1 one -one for 5 mana if you account for the fact that we have to tap this land down in order to produce that token. This isn't really a great deal, but if we have some leftover mana handy, you know, it's fine. Verdant Brace is going to pump up a creature and allow them to produce a sapperling each turn. Sandworm Convergence is locking down flyers and more importantly creating us some big beefy worms on our end step. Rabble Rousing is going to create us a ton of 1-1 citizens, but they're more likely to end up being cats or dogs. Outlaw's Merriment is going to create us one of three humans at upkeep. Where Killer Service is going to initially create us a few food tokens, but more importantly lets us sack tokens to create 4-4 four, four rhinos. Felidar Retreat will initially let us create Cat Beasts, but eventually passes out power to our entire board. Assemble the Legion is going to snowball out of control fast, as those muster counters kind of start adding up. Scepter of Celebration gives us a bit of power, and Trample to a creature when they smash face, we're rewarded with uh, just more fodder for the army, really. March of the Multitudes will create us X tokens and is convocable, making our Vigilant Dogs worth that much more. Call the Coppercoats is going to let us take advantage of the number of creatures our opponents have to further beef up our board. Artifact Mutation is going to blow up an artifact, likely a mana rock, and reward us with some Sapperlings. Sapperling Symbiosis is here to double the size of our army for 4 mana, 6 if we want to cast it at flash speed. Indulge is in a similar spot looking to give us new token creatures for each creature we attack with that turn. Of course, we're running Scoot Swarm to be rewarded for playing our lands. Maha, Bredegard Protector, is also going to reward us for playing our lands, uh, and also just kind of beefs up all of our creatures with a little, uh, little plus one plus one action. Kit, Kanto, Mayhem Diva is also here. Uh, they do create us a little, uh, little citizen on ETB, but they're really more here for the goat effect, but they are a token generator, so I felt like they were worth mentioning. Darling of the Masses technically pumps up our citizens, but they're really here to create them when they attack, and more likely, those tokens are going to be cats or dogs. 18 creature token generators is right where we want to be with this deck, and we'll have a large board because of it, and that board really needs to be protected. We're only running 3 protection pieces in the deck, we could definitely run more, but I think 3 is like a pretty sweet spot. We don't want to have an overabundance of them and just have them kind of be dead cards in hand. Starting off, we have Boros Charm to offer up Indestructible to all of our permanents. Grand Crescendo to give us more creatures and make all of our creatures indestructible until end of turn. And last up is Teferi's Protection, which lets us and all of our things kind of phase out. Our life total can't change. We're good for a turn. When we phase back in with our massive board after someone wipes it, or at least attempted to wipe it, we're likely swinging in pretty hard. So, we've ramped hard kept our hand full, and swarmed the board with a ton of creatures. How are we winning? Well, let's start out with the main alternate win con for the deck, which is Halo Fountain. This card is super versatile in the deck, creating us more tokens, drawing us cards, and once our board is large enough and we have a handful of white sources, just winning the game on the spot by untapping 15 of our creatures, likely by simply attacking with them and then paying the 5 to untap them. While Halo Fountain is our only guaranteed win in the deck, we do have some combos that are truly deadly, as well as some just high synergy cards that are worth mentioning. Warstorm Surge does work in this deck, we're creating a ton of tokens as you've already seen, and because those tokens can always be 3-1 dogs instead of whatever, you know, kind of smaller creatures they're meant to be, we're going to be dealing 3 damage every time we create a token, which is super powerful, it's a good way to clear off the board for, you know, our creatures to attack, or just to eliminate players, depending on how many we're creating at once. Parallel Lives is going to double up our token production. 
which speeds up our swarming potential and obviously combos pretty well with that War Storm Surge to get out even more damage. Beastmaster's Ascension is going to quickly allow all of our creatures to get plus 5 plus 5, so those 3 1 dogs are now 8 6 dogs. And if War Storm Surge is again on the field, 8 damage per token we generate is crazy. Champion of Lamholt is lowering the defenses of our opponents, letting our army just march on in and punch them in the face like the green player that we are. Academy Manufacturer is going to say, hey, I see you're trying to create some clues, some treasures, maybe even like a little bit of food off that uh, killer service. Why not all three? Combining them with our commander and prosperous partnership actually creates an infinite loop of token generation. We tap the creatures we have to generate a treasure. Because of a Academy Manufacturer, we're actually going to create a treasure, a clue, and a food. Our commander says, no, 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 those are actually creatures. We tap those three creatures to create another treasure, and thus the loop is established. Last up in the high synergy market, we have Elemental Mastery and Boss's Chauffeur. Uh, this also works with Champion of Lamholt, but either way, we're looking to tap down the enchanted creature. They're going to create tokens equal to their power. Each token entering is going to increase the power of that creature, meaning the next time we use the effect, it's at least twice as strong. That's the deck as it is now, but there are some cards that we could easily add in to make the deck even more of a powerhouse than it already is. Starting with more doubling token effects with Anointed Procession, Doubling Season, Mondrak Glory Dominus, and even a token tripler with the new Ogre Tack, Deepest Foundation. We could have more token creators with Adeline Resplendent Cathar, Anim Pakao, Thousandth Moon, King Darian, who doubles his protection for all of our tokens alongside Heroic Intervention. We could have a bit more ramp using Smothering Tithe, and Jahira, Friend of the Forest, and more power from Gold Knight Commander, Cathar's Crusade, Inspiring Leadership, and Jetmere Nexus of Revels. Those cards currently aren't in the deck because I just don't have spare copies, and I don't want to push the power level too high and not be able to play fairly in my pod. Uh, but hopefully you guys all like the deck, and if you want to see the full deck list, as always, there is a link to it in the description. Uh, as well as one for our Discord, where you can come hang out and be nerdy with us when we're not uh, strictly doing magic stuff. But until next time, good luck with your builds.